I'm Scott L. Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, we are heading up on the march to 14 Acosasco. This is the fortress that was taken 45 years ago as the final holdout of the forces of the dictator when they were controlling the country over a period of 70 years. 45 years ago, Troops went up the hill and sieged the fortress and were able to take it, beginning the freedom of the country. So this is a very special day in Nicaragua, and 45th anniversary is a pretty big one. It is both a big number, but it is also very important because a lot of the people that were involved are still alive, and a lot of people remember the taking of the fortress. And this is something that happened not just in Leon, the city, but it happened right here in the barrio of Sutiava. So we have a lot of footage that uh, we did. We actually did the walk. This is an annual event where they go from downtown Leon and the main square and walk all the way out to the fortress, which is on a tall hill south of the city. And so we are going to do almost all of that walk. We're not going to show it all in this video, but I'm going to take you along so you can see what this walk is like, because this is a very important cultural and uh, historical and political event that happens here in Nicaragua every year, and especially right here in the city of Leon. So we want to take you along and show you what it is like and tell you a little bit about what you're seeing. Now, we do have a sister channel, Nicaragua 360, and on that channel, I did a 360 degree view of this entire walk. So that is much longer, and you can look around and see absolutely everything. So if you're interested in the content here, be sure to pop over there. We will put the little uh, the little link right up. I guess it must be right here, and uh, you can click on that and go directly to that video, but please don't do that until after you've watched this one. So we'll see you right after the bump. And here we are, we are out on the street. Unfortunately, because of the way that the, the audio works, because of so much uh, music being played everywhere, recorded music, I have to basically drown out all of the actual sounds of the event, or it causes problems with YouTube. So I apologize that we're not able to bring you much. I'm gonna give you as much background as I think we can get away with. This is uh, the main street, Ruben Dario, as we're coming west, we're facing the Cathedral the Basilica of Leon down that direction. And as we turn, we're looking west into the Barrio of Sutiava. We're not to Sutiava yet. That is La Borio that we're looking at. We're standing in Saragossa. Uh, and so we're looking south right now. This is our crew. You can see Marcella there in her hat. And you can see me there holding the camera as we walk along with the crowd. We're pretty close to the beginning of the parade. Now, I am told that because this is such a popular event, and I'm going to get to more about what the event is in just a minute, but uh, because this is such a popular event that there are people who go to the final point of the parade or march uh, hours earlier because they want to get a good spot, they want to set up. Of course, some are vendors and that's why they do it. Um, but a lot of people are just going up there because they want to get into it. And uh, and and even as they're starting this march, uh, people start maybe a kilometer ahead of the actual official beginning of the march. And right here where we are, we're right at the very beginning. You can see uh, the people coming behind. So just so, a couple things uh, for you to recognize. If you see those blue and whites, that is the flag of Nicaragua. Nicaragua, which should be more or less recognizable. Uh, every country in the region has very similar colored flags because we all used to be part of the Central American uh, single country and it has inspired the flags of all of its uh, child countries with the exception of Costa Rica who took theirs from the American flag instead. And at some point, you will certainly see some of the uh, black and red flags. And you see a lot of people wearing those colors as well. That is the colors of the Sandinistas, who are the... Uh, so in this particular, and there you can see one of the flags, FSLN is the actual official initials of the Sandinistas. But in English, we tend to refer to them as just Sandinistas. We don't use the entire phrase. Um, but uh, that is in, in most world context. We think of Sandinistas as the current... Uh, 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 political party with primacy in Nicaragua, and they have had for the majority, but not all of, the last 45 years. Uh, however, in the case of an event like this, there's an important context, and hopefully I get this accurate in how I describe it, but at the time, so, so this, let's get to what this event is, and we're going to describe 
how the the Sandinistas fall into the context of this particular march, because it's all going to make a lot more sense why you're seeing so much of the red and black flying along with the Nicaraguan colors uh, at this event. So we're still just walking along. You can hear some of the sirens. And if you're wondering why my camera angle is so high, I'm actually riding in one of the police vehicles as they were coming down the street. They got flagged down. They were told to take me and I just hopped in. Um, and so I'm actually just standing up in the back of a pickup truck, holding the camera way in the air. Um, I got It's a really cool ride. If you want to see exactly what's going on, uh, our sister channel, Nicaragua 360, has the entirety of this event in 360 degrees so you can look in every direction see what's going on and get much longer form of the videos that one just has music playing it doesn't have me talking and uh, you can see it's more than an hour of just footage of the event we're gonna be a lot shorter over here we edited it way down um, and you're getting just single views of it this is much easier to watch but that one if you if you're interested in learning more about this event or you want to see more of Sutiava, Laborio, Saragossa, uh, Western Leon, uh, the the fortress the views all of that in 360 degrees is pretty epic and everything over there is in 8k so if you want to check that out absolutely please go like and subscribe over on nicaragua 360 getting that channel some attention is always a fantastic thing so we're still looking at the parade coming towards us. And so what this event is is 45 years ago in on on July 7th 1979 uh Nicaragua had been essentially occupied for 70 years. So there's a lot of different ways of, of contextualizing um, how that is. And we'll, we'll do a lot of history videos in the future and, and help dive into this because there's a lot that is just not known in general. There you can see a lot of the flags all mixed together. Uh, you're going to see a ton of that as we go through the day. Um, <clears throat> so in this particular uh, uh, historical event, after 70 years of occupation, uh, and, and some of that was heavily occupied, some was lightly occupied, but for 70 years, uh, from roughly, roughly, and, and of course, you know, history is, is difficult to define in large uh, stro uh, strokes of the brush, but from 1909 to 1979, Nicaragua was partially or completely occupied by foreign forces that were enforcing a brutal series of dictatorships, uh, which was essentially a kingdom. It was a dynasty, just from father to son, more or less, for several generations, all put in place by foreign military. And the regime was brutal. This was not a pleasant dictatorship like you had in like Libya under Gaddafi. Of course, the United States, uh, if you have an American context, are very anti-Gaddafi. But in Libya, he kept the peace and did a lot of public works and was known as a very benevolent dictator. This is not what we're talking about here in most of the 20th century in Nicaragua. This was an extremely brutal dictator, famous for torture and murder and total suppression of of human rights of freedom of speech of of every like it was extreme right this was a really really brutal dictatorship that could never have been maintained if it wasn't for foreign military keeping him in power so this was very much uh, a foreign war being fought on Nicaragua's soil against the people of Nicaragua themselves uh, so in 1979 after many attempts at freeing the country because this was not the first attempt by any stretch and there had been some successes in the past but this was uh in 1979 um, there had been a major push and a major amount of success happening um, both physically in the military here in nicaragua as well as some amount of um, press and news was starting to leak into the united states and the american people were starting to become aware that the government had been hiding that it was waging a war in Nicaragua against its authorization from the American people. Not just in secret, but it had been, um, it, it, they had voted against this. There had been a lot of pressure because of Vietnam not that long before not to let this stuff happen in Nicaragua. And so there had been a lot of things hidden and it was starting to leak out. And so the American people were starting to realize what was happening and the government was starting to pull out, um, out, of, out of a need to keep the American and people placated. So as we're walking along the street, I have to take a break. This is a cool little, uh, th these are the traditional uh, Nicaraguan dresses. You'll see some later as well. And just if you're in Nicaragua, you're going to see these. They're all over the place, but the yellow, the white, the pink, these are like the colors. I think there's a turquoise as well. Of course, I'm colorblind, so I don't tend to remember things in as colors the way that most people do. Uh, but this is a beautiful little demonstration they had going on. That is a school behind. You can see the school is actually painted in the blue and white. 
white, but because of the event, they have banners of the black and red out there. So in 1979, there was a major military push um, to free the country. And not the first victory and not the final victory, but by far the most symbolic victory was the sieging of the fortress or Fortin de Akasasco. And what this represents is Akasasco was uh, a famous prison and torture center used by the dictator and uh, the number of people who were murdered there and brutally brutally murdered there uh, is extremely high and and so it had a legacy now it was older than the dictatorship but it had been constructed under less than ideal circumstances in the 1800s as well so so the fortress has stood over the city of leon as a threat for at this point 90 years 1979 it is so therefore 90 years um, as, as a symbol of a threat of suppression against the people of Leon. As Leon has always, even before uh, the era that we're talking about, had been very much opposed to uh, the power base at Granada. So there's always been infighting as countries have, right? So we're getting much more into esoteric and deeper uh, uh, history at that point. But uh, so the, the taking of the fortress on July 7th, 1979, was an incredibly important symbolic victory for the country itself as it attempted to retake itself from colonial oppressors with a dictator in place. And uh, in, in doing this, there was a couple really important things. One is there was the, the it was called the uh, Guardia Nacional or National Guard. And they were famously essentially like secret police or not so secret police uh, who were enforcing the will of the dictator. So they were a terror organization that went around the country and would abduct people and kill people. And it was, they were horrible. This was, they had been losing around the country and they pulled back to this fortress. This is where they made their final stand before the United States evacuated them by helicopter, the few remaining people. The uh, fact that this was the last place that the National Guard made their stand and that it was the, uh, the, the really, really big victory for the combatants in Nicaragua for retaking their country, which didn't actually become completely free for another 12 days. So this was just Leon. In fact, it was just the Barrio Usutiava that was being freed at that moment. But 12 days later, uh, Managua and the rest of the country would be free, and that is why it is July 19th that is celebrated as Revolution Day, as the, as the day that the country uh, became free. But here in Leon, and especially in Sutiava, the celebration is completely different. It's such a big thing on the 7th, uh, which is when we filmed this. Before I go into more history, I just want to say, this is 12th Street. We are southbound. You saw us come around the corner. That was into Sutiava. If you saw the stoplight go over us, or the semaphoro, that is the barrier between the official city of Leon and the official barrio of Sutiava. So when we crossed that, we were into Sutiava, and then we made a turn onto 12th. Uh, but the numbers are shared between Leon and Sutiava. They don't renumber when you switch cities. Uh, so we're now southbound on 12th, which is the majority of the walk. If you look at the, the map that we put up at the beginning of the video, we showed just how far south we were going to go on that. It's also the street that has all the elevation changes. Say hello to all the, the police there lined up, the police everywhere, and very friendly. A lot of people are always afraid of police just because of experiences in their own countries. But here in Nicaragua, police are very friendly, especially when you're out at parades and stuff because they're just out doing traffic control and making sure people are safe. Like it's You can totally go up and take pictures and smile and say hi and whatever. Okay, so... Uh, so one of the things that people have to understand to really have a context in Nicaragua, and this is very easy to forget or not be aware of because of the 45 years of news and, and media that has occurred since uh, the, the freedom of the country in 1979, is that the, the uh, military or paramilitary or, or uh, uh, rebel group, however you want to describe it, that was fighting for the freedom of the country. And there were multiple groups. I don't want to, you know, lump everyone together, but they were the Sandinistas. That was the the uh, military group that was attempting to free the country. Once they freed the country, they formed over a period of time. This was not instantaneous. They formed an interim government, and over time, formed a political party as what used to be more or less a military unit, or how you can, you know, when you have a country trying to. Uh, uh, overthrow 
uh, a dictator and overthrow. Even if you if you put it in the context of the American Revolution, the con the the uh, con uh, constitutional army um, of uh, of the United States of the colonies were known as irregulars. So they were, if you were looking at it from the British context, it was not a regular army, meaning it was not a paid professional army. They were uh, m basically militias pulled from the states. So they're known as irregulars as opposed to the British military at the time, which would have been regulars. So at this uh, era in 1979, the Sandinistas would have been irregulars and the forces of Somoza, the dictator, would have been regulars. They were a paid professional military force, uh, a but they're, they're enemy was the people of Nicaragua. Uh, and so this, so the Sandinistas, uh, as this uh, really large group, and this of course included far more than just people who were picking up guns and fighting in the, you know, more or less trenches. And in the case of taking back the fortress, we are talking about nearly literally trenches, right? That there is some trench uh, uh, exposed spots there, but we're talking about real military going on um, in the jungles, in the in the fields, in the in the cities. Uh, but you also had spy networks, you had supporters, you had, uh, you know, organizers, and, and it, this this went on for decades, right? This was not something that happened overnight. This was not just a group of people who got, it's not 15 people who got together over beers and said, hey, let's go take the fortress. This was many years, really decades of strongly organized uh, attempts to free the country um, from this horrific dictatorship. So after uh, the Sandinistas and their constituent groups managed to first overthrow uh, uh, the, the fortress, take back the fortress, and then free the country at Managua and drive out all the last holdouts of the Somoza regime, then they were the obvious choice to form the interim government because they're the ones who had put their lives on the line for the country. And then as these things naturally do, they slowly morphed from being an irregular military unit into being an interim government, into being a political party that has representation in the government. And, and the same thing, or nearly the same thing, we have happened in American history, of course, many hundreds of years, well, a few hundred years ago, and you see it in the Federalist, who were the ones who primarily orchestrated the the colonial armies they were the you know George Washington's party John Adams party the early presidents were all part of the same uh, political party and people were strongly behind that party because it was the party primarily not individually and not it wasn't a party at the beginning at the beginning it was a bunch of military units and individual people just attempting to, to reach a, a single goal when they achieve that goal they then still had a lot of shared agenda and naturally you, you tend to form political parties. And in the United States, that was the Federalist and the Federalist went with very little opposition for about 60 years, 70 years. There was some, but the majority of it was very little. It didn't feel like you could really uh, look in any other direction and there wasn't really need to as there generally isn't when a country is young because people are focused on cohesion in the country that there's a need for people to have an identity together there is a need for uh, unity there's a need for protection because the the war is not necessarily over and in the United States a great example of that is we declared independence in 1776 the government was formed in 1789 but England did not consider the war over until 1814. That was a very long period of time in which all-out uh, military action was still taking place. The United States has a tendency to call 1812 the War of 1812. Uh, by the way, that is the Palestinian flag we just saw for those who do not recognize it. Nicaragua as a country that has been fighting for its uh, uh, freedom under colonial power and for fighting for their uh, right to live as a people facing the potential for genocide, facing uh, being wiped out. Then we never had to deal with genocide in Nicaragua, but the potential for it has been there. Uh, and the, the idea that human life is not that valuable um, has been something that, that they have faced very heavily. And so there's an incredible amount of ideological uh, alignment with the people of Palestine and a lot of sentiment uh, in support of them. So you'll see a lot of those flags being waved. They fly all over the country. There's new streets and parks 
parks named after uh, Palestine or Gaza or different areas in the region. Um, and you'll see people wearing, for example, uh, scarves and such in support of Palestine. Uh, if you're paying attention to the video, I'm sure you'll see some. So because there's this natural affinity for a political party to form, and to have a basically a honeymoon period in which they go with very few rivals because uh, the idea that you would vote against a group who overthrew whatever, right? So in the United States' uh, uh, history, it was overthrowing England and helped maintain the government that kept the peace against England for decades because if they didn't have unity, if they didn't show strength, if they didn't keep the resolve that had gotten them the freedom in the first place, it would have been taken away. And England showed that with the War of 1812, they made a really strong effort to take that freedom away again. And uh, to them, it was just a pause. It was never the end. Uh, and so... And so you see the same thing playing out here in Nicaragua. It's exactly what you would expect. Because there was a group who is still alive, that the, the people who were the combatants in 1979, the people who took this hill, who took this fortress in 1979, are walking in this group. Many of them are not, but a few of them are still walking in this group and going up this hill with everyone. This is not some long ancient history that should be discarded or forgotten or no longer given a lot of weight but this is a very prescient, weighty event that affects the lives of people every day. And the people walking this path know that, that freedom isn't free, that this is something that, that people fought for. And so what you're seeing here to give that, this is a really important context to understand that this is a large group of people who are, um, I turn a little bit here because this field is absolutely gorgeous. We kind of leave the city, it feels like, and you get some, a little bit of trees and these great fields behind. And for some reason, they want people not to get lost. So there's a, a cop standing there totally like, don't go into this field. I can only imagine that like thousands of people would use the field as a bathroom and they'd run out into the shadows if he didn't do that and it would be a problem. I don't know, but you can see how many people, we're still at the front of this parade. This line goes on for miles. It's absolutely incredible. And when you see how many people are in front of us, in, in reality, it's, it's crazy. When we get up to the top of the hill, you'll get a feel for how far back we are, but we're at the front, more or less. This line took more than three hours to arrive at the destination, meaning that the people at the front of the line were at the destination and the end of the line was still arriving three hours later. Like, this is completely crazy. So one of the reasons that you see such a happy group of people here, like these people are excited. This is a lot of people having a lot of fun. You can see everybody's like dancing in the street and they're whistling and, you know, screaming and waving and people who can't walk are lined up on the sides and people who can walk are walking and like the whole city turns out and it's a really cool social event and people are very excited about it. It's a lot like the 4th of July in the United States, but imagine the 4th of July when the country had just within that existing generation won its independence. Of course, you know, hundreds of years later, people are still excited to be independent. Yeah, look at everybody so excited in the truck, right? You're, you're going to be excited hundreds of years later, like, hey, hey, our country is free, that's great, you know? But when you're talking about, oh, my grandfather, my grandmother went up this hill and I lost a family member. In Nicaragua, everybody has a family member who died in the revolution. Everyone, everyone has family members who fought and survived. Everyone is marching with family. Everyone is remembering who they lost, who, you know, saved them, who earned their freedom. And everyone who's over 50 remembers living under the dictator and knows the difference. And so there isn't this, like hundreds of years later forgetting how how important this is there isn't hundreds of years later not really understanding or honoring or needing to do these things because who who are you honoring but here you're going up to celebrate with the people who did it is a completely different thing so imagine going to a fourth of july event in 1825 in the united states when there was still that strong antebellum unity in the country it hadn't fallen apart yet. I'm not saying it was a great time period in history. It had a lot of negatives for sure. But imagine how excited people would be to be at those events and be hanging out with 
older revolutionary soldiers who had fought off the British and, you know, it, completely different experience. And, and that's what you have to imagine is happening here. So this is a big family event. This is a big social event. Everyone's out seeing friends, people they see all the time, uh, people that they don't see very often. Like this is this is a really big, like see the people you only see a few times a year kind of thing because everybody comes out to it. And uh, it was really awesome to get to be able to go along and to have some context to understand what it was that we were we were walking to and of course you can do if you're interested in the fortress you don't have to be here on july 7th and do this march you can go up there anytime and if you schedule it ahead of time you can schedule to do the dark history tour which we've shown on the show a few times uh, which is a full tour of the fortress with a bunch of the history and going through all the different eras because of course the fortress has been around longer than all of these events and and has seen things uh over the last whatever it is 135 145 years uh 135 years i'm pretty sure and uh, so there's a lot of interest there as well. You can tell here, we're starting to walk up the hill. The ground is starting to go up. So it's not a mountain, but it is a serious hill. We do get quite a bit of exercise on this particular walk. So people will start to slow down and some lucky people did get to be in vehicles, which makes the walk a lot harder than it would be otherwise. But there's always vehicles mixed in, but it is nice. If, you, if you're unable to walk or, or just don't have the time or you're with you know you're older and yes you can go up in a car uh you can go up on a motorcycle that's it's not really a problem although pretty quickly they ran out of space for cars because this is not meant to have parking or anything like that so that did become a problem later on uh, but uh this was, I was really, really glad to get to do this. It was absolutely fantastic from a, a cultural and historical perspective and just getting to be a part, to, like it really makes you feel like you're sharing in this experience a bit. So with all those things, it really, I think, helps explain why uh, so many people are either directly still, because I think a lot of people from outside of Nicaragua don't understand why there is such a presence for the FSLN or the Sandinistas, why um, they're seen as so important inside the country, why so many people aren't just like, oh yes, I support what they're doing, or I like their government, or, right, it's not, it's not seen that way, in my opinion, in, in what I've observed, is that it is seen very strongly as a symbol of freedom and a symbol of the revolution that is still going on. Nicaragua is still today fighting to maintain its sovereignty and to maintain its freedom. That is something that is actually threatened all the time in Nicaragua. And I've seen it firsthand where people have been sent to try to disrupt, uh, you know, freedom within Nicaragua. And that's actually something that they're paid to do in the country. Like that's absolutely crazy that you would just casually run into people. There's so many people who are sent and paid to do that by nonprofits, by government agencies and such. And it's such a cheap thing to do, which is something that's very misleading that you don't realize how little money it would take to do that to a really small, really poor country. Uh, and so it's something that just happens very casually, very, very offhandedly, I think. And so because people see the FSLN as this symbol of their freedom and a symbol of their post-colonial country, of their post-occupation, post-dictator life, it, it symbolizes human rights. It symbolizes the unity of the Nicaraguan people. It symbolizes their freedoms. It symbolizes their right to exist as a sovereign nation, um, their right to uh, self-determination of where they're going to be in the world. It's hard not to be excited as a people on, on a pretty large scale when those are things that were threatened or you did not have within the current generation and there is this group who fought and died for it right like there's no question like there is in 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 a, in a political party that has been around for a long time you're going to have well yes someone in that political party from generations ago put their lives on the line and they cared but you know that was five generations ago now it's just people who are trying to make money and it's a job that's the nature of, of the, the, the life uh, uh, span, right? The life cycle of political parties tends to work very much that way. 
And I'm sure the same things will play out here as they have everywhere else. But right now, and this is why it's such an amazing thing to witness, you are literally seeing a party that is the representation of the fighting force that gained the freedom for the people. So every person who's walking is free because of the freedom fighters who fought for that freedom. And so many people died. And the people who are still around, the older ones, are the actual survivors who actually put their lives on the line, who lost their friends, who lost their brothers and sisters, who had their families tortured and murdered. Some, Many of them were tortured. Obviously, none of them were murdered, but could have been. These are things that they were willing to do to protect and save their country. And so it's very hard to not take them as being very honestly looking out for the good of the country. Why would they not be looking out for the good of the people after having put their lives on the line for that? There was no anticipation that they were going to be forming a government or in any way leading the country decades later. That was not an anticipated outcome by anybody. I'm sure someone said, hey, you know, it'd be really cool if we actually won this incredible conflict and then, right? Like, but that's not, that's very pie in the sky that Nicaragua has been such a successful country is such an unbelievable success story given the oppression that it went through, given how hard fought its, its freedom is. How hard fought its sovereignty is, uh, is an amazing thing. And, and I think that uh, as an outsider coming into Nicaragua, you see such a friendly, welcoming, jovial, partying, but also very risk-taking, very step out into traffic, very life is fleeting, YOLO, take your chances kind of attitude. And I think when you look back at this history of all these great things that they have are very recent and they understand very well that they can be taken away at a moment's notice and that things can change. But they also appreciate the value of freedom and the value of family and the value of not being oppressed and not fearing those things anymore. Uh, on a real scale, right? They still fear foreign countries coming in and taking them over and losing that hard-fought freedom. That is a very real fear, both in that the fear is very real and you, you see it everywhere, but it is also a very real possibility that they face and if they let their guard down, they know it could happen. And so they're very, very uh, focused on keeping that guard up. But because of those things, events like this, and it could be, you know, church processions, it could be, uh, you know, historical or revolutionary marches like this one, it could be uh, just people playing in the park, you get this incredible sense of community in Nicaragua. And that history kind of forces you to have this incredible sense of unity and togetherness as a country. And just real quickly, look at this view. That is Cerro de Oro directly in front of us uh, with the smaller hill just to the right of it. We're going to climb that sometime soon with Mario. Uh, but I just That's such a great view as you're getting towards the top of this hill. I had to show it, and I'm glad I did because the clouds rolled in. So that was our one sunny view. But this, this history, this incredibly youthful feeling of Nicaragua so much comes from how recently these events took place, how tangible this history is to Nicaraguans, that, that this is not like other countries where they're celebrating black and white sketches of people and, and places that don't really exist anymore. And everything that happened in Nicaragua is still there for them to see. And it's such a small country that everybody knows everybody. And so when Leon has an event like this, it is the entire city coming out and everyone knows each other. And when things happen in Managua, people come from all over the country and sure, they don't see each other as often as they do when they're in Leon, but they still, everyone knows everybody. And it's like, oh yes, it's you. I haven't seen you in years. And right, it's a completely different thing. Now check this out. We're coming up finally to the top of the hill. Now the actual actual walk was quite a lot longer. Remember, we skipped part of it, we rode in a truck part of it, and then I edited out a ton of the walk to speed this up for you guys. And so all that time we've been walking and uphill. Do not forget that we have climbed a hill in doing this. All those views you're seeing, we climbed from the bottom to get up here. Not that it's an epic hill. It's not like we scaled a mountain or anything. Just 
is a long walk holding a camera the entire way. Go watch the 360 view to see how long it is. And it was still, I didn't start at the very beginning when I did the 360, but I did take it all the way up. Uh, so here we are, we're coming in. So they actually have a stage set up up here. We're gonna take you to the fortress yet. You can't quite see it, but that's where we are. You can see that big stage is there. That is the standard Nicaraguan stage that you see at every Tonya event, every you know music thing. They have like a, a kind of stock stage that they tend to use because they have interchangeable parts. And you can see the vendors up here selling beer and, and Gatorade, and, and there's definitely some food. They had bouncy houses and stuff set up for kids. Let's hop a little bit, you can see the crowd there. And uh, so because this is the Sandinistas taking of the, the fortress, that's the fortress on the left behind the stage. There's a bunch of people on top of the fortress itself. So we don't get a great view of it, but we have done shows of the fortress itself in the past. And you can compare that because we did it three years ago and we did it two years ago. We actually did it two years ago today on the day that I'm recording this, uh, uh, that we record, you can see how it's changed since then, because they have done more repairs and more construction. Um, but they, at the event, you know, which I'm not going to show, because again, they play music that we can't really use, but they have dancers and speakers. And it wasn't a really long event. Like people are tired coming up the hill and people go party afterwards, but uh, they did a lot of cool stuff. So we're going to head down and actually go into this fortress. So you're going to get just a little bit of a tour of it. It's not actually that huge of a facility. This was, remember, primarily a torture center, not a detention facility. It was built to be a fortress, not for what it ended up being used for. So it's not well designed for that purpose. Uh, and hopefully the video comes out okay. I think that the, the X3 captured this pretty well in reality. I'm happy with how much you can see. Those are the names of the original uh, uh, followers of Sandino there on the wall. It's much older than the Sandinista movement. Um, hopefully I have my history right. This is the, the main part of the fortress and all of that was originally built to be bunks for the, for the military that was stationed here back in the 1800s. All of that has been converted into, well now it's just open, but all those little side uh, chambers all became the jail cells. And they look pretty big until you realize they weren't for one person. They had tons of people shoved into them and it was, it was pretty horrific. Uh, but we've done all that previously. There's Marcella going up the ramp to the top. A lot of people love to hang out on top because the views from up here are some of the best in Nicaragua. So uh, it's kind of sad that the best views in the country are from a torturous fortress. But it is what it is. The views are unbelievable. Um, and there are other mountains that have really good views. Uh, but this region, this one really stands out. And there's a reason why they put a fortress here. It had the commanding view of a massive area. Uh, so there you can see the structure that we came out of. And now we're just a little bit in front of where we were. But we're going to go over and give you an idea of the crowd as seen from the fortress. And that is the stage on the left right there. So... That context is, yeah, it's, it's important for this particular parade. And and one of the things that people ask is, why is everyone so happy? Why in a uh, essentially uh, kind of, in, in some ways you can see it as political. It's not really a political parade, right? That's a misnomer. It is a national parade. This is a bit of national pride. This is the country becoming free of oppression, uh, just celebrating a major event. It would be a little bit like Americans celebrating the Battle of Bunker Hill or the Battle of Gettysburg as really uh, important events that happened throughout their, their history, but they weren't the final events. They were just really important battles or whatever. This could be seen very much like that. Right, just a really important event that locally is super important, but nationally is also important, and and but is much more recent. And so people are coming out not as uh, um, you know school kids having to learn something, not as uh, necessarily you know Sandinistas celebrating uh, some political thing. While that could be true, there you can see the Palestinian uh, scarf a little bit just real quickly, and. Uh, he was pointing out, I'm sure, look at the dark clouds in front of us. We had decided to leave just a little bit early because some clouds were rolling in. We could see them on the other side of Leon from the top of the hill. And we're like, oh, it's a long walk down and they roll in really fast out here. So you can see it's kind of clear out to the west and coming in from the east. It's pretty dark. Yeah, that's going to catch us. So you'll see a little bit of what happens in, in just a minute. As we go down the hill, you'll see that uh, as we approach. Unfortunately, uh, that guy got hurt there's an ambulance coming it is a long walk up the hill so it's really easy to have cardiac events um, especially when you have um, a lot of people in crowds walking up the hill um, 
and uh, so that's the the white cross arriving there. We just happened to walk by as the ambulance arrived, and um, so it's it's easy to imagine that this is a very uh, government event, which of course the government is paying for uh, the the stage to be put up or whatever, right? Because it is just like a 4th of July event would be put on by the municipality or whatever. Uh, and it's very easy to imagine that this is a political party event. And of course, because there's a political party that is associated with the freeing of the the fortress, they're going to have a very strong presence there. But this is an event for everyone, right? You, this is a community event for the people of Leon. It is a national event for all Nicaraguans, and that's very much how it feels. This is, everybody knows everybody. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was cool to see the excitement of all these people coming out and, and seeing their neighbors and seeing friends and family and identifying together as uh, you know, as a community, as a greater community, as a large Nicaraguan community um, around something that's so, so important. So I hope that context really, really helps understand what it is you're seeing because uh, you can come out to, you know, if you're going to live in Nicaragua, these kind of events are things you're probably going to want to be involved in. It's a great way to connect with the community. It's a great way to get out and meet people, to see people. And it's a part of Nicaraguan life. In most countries, you don't have events of this nature that are as important as they are in Nicaragua because of the, the timeline of how recently these things have happened and how relevant they are to everyday life uh, the way they are in Nicaragua. That's a lot of rain coming down now, so we're getting pretty drenched. Uh, that's Marcella. She gave up on her hat. Her hat was so wet that she preferred to have it just rain on her head. That's how bad it is. Um, so uh, if you're going to be living here, you are probably going to want uh, to be involved in these kinds of events. Uh, we did get picked up. Some friends came and got us. They had a pickup truck, and it was full. Their kids are inside trying to stay dry. So we just hopped in the back. You can see me there a little bit. I'm holding the camera. Marcel is riding along, and uh, we're just going through the streets of the city. This is what you do in Nicaragua. You ride in the back of pickup trucks, and so often you're doing so in the rain. This is a, this is a pretty common occurrence, especially if you're heading out like to the beach or something. Uh, and so it's, um, if you're going to be living here, yeah, this, this is something that you can avoid, of course, and be like, I don't like parades. I don't like getting involved in community events. Yep. That's possible. That is, that is water flowing through the streets right there. <laughs> um, and this rain just started, right? It's, it got really flooded on this day. And then if you're going to be here as a, as a tourist and you're interested in learning more, connecting more with Nicaragua, absolutely. You should not in any way feel that you can't come out and participate in these events of course just be respectful as you would anywhere um but it's a it's a great opportunity to see people really honestly being excited about their country and their culture and their history and their freedoms uh which is something that you don't really see and i know in you know i'm an american and growing up in the united states we would say these words oh we're so excited about our freedoms or our, our revolution or whatever but it was so long ago we are so disconnected from it that it is a different thing seeing this in the generation that fought for it being able to celebrate with the people who know firsthand what it took to earn that freedom is a completely different experience and something that um, you're unlikely to have a chance to come into such visceral hands-on tangible contact with uh, anywhere else. Uh, so as a, as a traveler, if you want to really understand Nicaragua, if you want to really understand the people here um, and just, you know, experience something quite unique that you're not likely to find elsewhere in your travels, and I highly recommend that go out and get involved in these community events, find out when things are going on, and don't feel that it's something that you can't do. If anyone is not going to be uh, comfortable doing events like this, it is going. that is the Church of Sutiava, by the way, that we're going past, in case anyone's trying to figure out where we are. That is the Sutiava Church. And uh, we're just coming up on its east side. That is the north side road uh, across the top of it that goes to where all the food carts are. We're just coming up on Ruben Dario. And, uh, you know, as an American, if there's anyone who would potentially feel less than welcome here, it would be an American. Of, of all people, and as an American, in no way whatsoever. Is it uncomfortable, or am I not welcome? If anything, people are... Look at how much water is flowing through the streets. Like, come on. Uh, people are very literally excited that I am there 
as a foreigner and even as an American specifically to take the opportunity to try to understand why Nicaragua is the way that it is, why these things are important to it, what it means to them, and, uh, and, and to participate um, with them and connect. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymecoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It's really been a pleasure doing this one for you. Um, I think this was, this was a lot of fun, and I think it's really valuable. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, get down there in the comments. Let me know what you think, and I will see all of you tomorrow.